ಶ್ರೀಮಹಾಧಿಪ ನಮಃ ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪ್ರಿಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪ ಒಂದು ಕನ ಐ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಸಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಮೀಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ವಿ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಡಿಸ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈವನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನರಸಿಂಹ ಕರಾವಲಂಬ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಬೈ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಲಾಂಗರ್ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಪ್ರಾಬಬ್ಲಿ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಟು ಏಟೀನ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ದಿ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫಿಗರ್ ಔಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯೋರ್ ಸರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೊ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಅಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೇಂದ್ರ ಸಿಂಹ ಕರಾವಲಂಬ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಯು ರೀಡ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಈಚ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಸೀ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಸೇ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಪಯೋ ನಿಧಿ ನಿಕೇತನ ಚಕ್ರಪಾಣೆ ಶಂಕರಾಸ್ ಪೊಯಟ್ರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಸಮಾಸಾಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಲರ್ನ್ ಟು ಸೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಮೆ ಸೇ ದಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾದ ಭೋಗೇಂದ್ರ ಭೋಗ ಮಣಿ ರಂಜಿತ ಪುಣ್ಯಮೂರ್ತೆ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಒನ್ ಸಮಾಸ ಯು ಮೆ ಸೇ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಭೋಗೇಂದ್ರ ಭೋಗ ಮಣಿ ರಂಜಿತ ಪುಣ್ಯಮೂರ್ತೆ ಯೋಗೀಶ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಶರಣ್ಯ ಭವಾಧಿಪೋತ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹ ಮಮ ದೇಹಿ ಕರಾವಲಂಬ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ವಾಕ್ಯ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಪಾದ ವಿಚ್ ರಿಪೀಟ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದೆ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಪಲ್ಲವಿ ಐ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ಈಶ್ವರ ಸಿ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸೇ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹ ದ ಜನರಲ್ ವೇ ಜನರಲ್ಲಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಮೇ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಮ್ ಮೇ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಮ್ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಮ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಫೈವ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಎ ಡಜನ್ ಮಿನಿಮಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೋ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮ ದೆನ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಸೇ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಅ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಅ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಅದ್ವಯ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗಾಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದ ಇನ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮ ಹಿಂದೂ ಧರ್ಮ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ಮಕಾಂಡ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ಮಕಾಂಡ ಏಕಂ ಸದ್ ವಿಪ್ರ ಬಹುಧಾ ವದಂತಿ ಇಂದ್ರಂ ಯಮಂ ಮಾತರಿಶ್ವಾನ ಮಾಹು ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂ
one reality through many names. Why many names? Corresponding to many forms. So that vision is very clear even in the Karmakanda portion. Similarly, when you do Upasana, Upasana means worshipping the Lord, mental worship, Upasana. Karma means physical worship. So in the mental worship also, Upasya, the reality that is worshipped, is always one. The methods of worship are many. In the case of mental worship, the method is what? You contemplate on a particular form. That is the method. So you contemplate, or, or you stay with one particular mantra. That is the mental worship, Japadhyana. So you contemplate upon Rama's form, or Rama mantra, or you visualize Shiva's form with Shiva mantra. You are not worshipping two different gods. You are worshipping the same Godhead through different mantras or different names, different forms. Upasya Bhedaha Nasti. Upasana Bhedayeva. Upasana is the method of worship. There is a change in it. It varies from person to person, situation to situation. But the Upasya, the, the Vastu, the reality that is worshipped is one and the same. This point has to be understood. In fact, the social philosophers and Mahatmas say, when the Hindus lost this truth, they started that really they are worshipping different gods. And then they started fighting among themselves, Shiva, Vishnu, Vibhayada, etc. That is the point when we lost uh, our glory and that was the point when uh, the Hindu dharma started its downfall, like that the Mahatmas say. Therefore we should not be under the impression that we are worshipping many gods. Anyway, all this is by the way. So Lakshmi and Rasimha, one more form of that Lord is Lakshmi and Rasimha. So Nrsimha, Nrsimha is a, an important incarnation, avatara. Just a very short avatara it is, not like Rama avatara or Krishna avatara. It comes and goes. So it comes for a specific purpose, no teaching, nothing. Just Bhagavan crystallizes in, the, in a given form, uh, depending upon the demands of a given situation, to put an end to this demon called Hiranyakashipu. And so Hiranyakashipu's boons were there. In fact, when somebody is asking too many things, somebody is demanding too many things, they say, oh my goodness, this is like Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> <laughs> they say, sometimes this son-in-law, new son-in-law, he has too many demands, they won't say to, so that he hears, but they will say among them, Why, what is this Hiranyakashivaras or Hiranyakashipuvaras? I, I should not die. No, no, I should not die. That is his vara. No, 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 that is not possible. Brahmaji told that is not possible. Uh, so then, uh, okay, you, you change your vara. I cannot give it. It is not in my hands, Brahmaji said. Because I am going to end at the end of the vara. I am going to end. I cannot help myself against coming to an end, against death, so, so-called death. How can I help you? So that is not possible. Okay, I will modify my bone. Okay, go ahead. I should not die during the day and during the night. Brahmaji, even while he heard the demand, he has worked it out in his mind and said, yes, granted. Outside he says, yes, granted. And inside he said, you will die during the twilight zone. This is what he said. I should not be... I should not die in the hands of a man or an animal. He said yes. And inside he thought there must be a form which is not there in his own creation. Brahma's creation doesn't have such a form. But then he thought it out, okay, Bhagavan has to come in a form which is not in my own creation, which is half man and half animal. Then that form alone could kill this guy. So that is the Nrsimha form. Nru is a Nara human and Simha is the animal. That animal should be Simha only because the, the demon has to be killed. So the canine teeth and the most ferocious the class are required to slay this guy. Therefore that must be Simha. Because he should not die in the hands of an animal, 
So to make it something different from the animal, so one half is man, the other half is animal. That is the Nrsimha form. Just the form appears uh, appears uh, uh, to fulfill one particular uh, situation. That's all. And once the Hiranyakashipu was killed, Devatas, in Bhagavatam it is very elaborately described in Prahaladopakhyana, so Devatas, uh, they pray to the God, and then the form disappears. Oh, that is the form. So this form is particularly worth noting. Uh, it is more very important for the devotees because it helps the person to overcome an otherwise intractable situation. This Hiranya, putting an under to this Hiranya Kashipu was uh, beyond anybody's capacity in Brahmaji's creation. No devatas can do it because they don't fulfill these conditions. So many conditions. He should not be killed on earth on land or in waters. That is another condition. Therefore, so, okay, Brahmaji thought, okay, uh, the Bhagavan uh, in his incarnation will keep you on his lap and kill you, which is neither land nor water. Lap is different from both. Land and water are both objects of uh, observation by the subject. And so subject's lap is neither land nor water. So like that. So this way, I should not be killed within home or without home. Okay, there is the threshold, and the threshold you will be killed. That is what he thought in his mind. So this way, that's why one, one should understand that we should not fight against Ishwara's will. We should not fight against it. That is wrong. So when uh, Ishwara's will becomes clear to us, we should surrender to it. We should not fight against it, because ultimately we will lose the game and we will suffer in the process. So Lakshmi Narasimha Avatara is the best example uh, to surrender, best example that inspires people to surrender. So there is Ishwara's will and here is my will. Don't pit your will against Ishwara's will. Once you understand that this and so, such and such is the will of Ishwara, then you, you surrender. Don't pit your will against Ishwara's will. For example, every individual born must die. That is the law of nature. Law of nature is same as Ishwara's will, one and the same. Law of nature and Ishwara's will are one and the same. So, when you when you stand on earth, it upholds you, supports you. You step into water, it will take you down, it won't support you. That is law of nature, which is Ishwara's will. Now this person says, I will do tapas and gain a power to stand on water or to walk on water. Unnecessary, you know, you are going against Ishwara's will. You may ultimately succeed in doing that, but then uh, that kind of a success is very short-lived, if at all. It is very short-lived and it doesn't take the person anywhere. It is a huge ego that makes us fight against Ishwara's will instead of accepting Ishwara's will. The capacity to accept, it is a, that is the message of Lakshmi Nrsimha. And Hiranya Kashipu, he stands as an example of a bloated ego and he doesn't accept the nature's laws. That is what Hiranyakashipu is. And so that is the symbolism associated with it. Also, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, they represent two wrong aspects of our life. These are within us only. All these Rakshasas are within us only. They are the children of Diti. Diti is a division, Dvaita. Therefore, from division, I am separate and everything else is separate from such a division, so the demons will rise, two demons. I am here separate, isolated from the whole, and the whole is separate from me. That is the diti. From that diti, that, that, that is against the fact. Fact is not isolation. But uh, we entertain this uh, wrong notion of division in our heart. That is diti. And from such diti, she, the so-called diti, is a personification, she gives birth to two children. One is the greed for wealth, hiranyaksha. 
ऑलवेज लुकिंग एट वेल्थ लुकिंग लुकिंग एट वेल्थ कैलकुलेटिंग ऑलवेज कैलकुलेटिंग वेल्थ सो इसे वन लेडी ऑफ द होम शी आस्क्ड हर हजबेंड यू परचेज ए कलर टीवी इट इज ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट टीवी वी आर अनेबल टू वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू सी इट्स फेस अवर नेबर्स आर हैविंग कलर टीवी and a nice movie is there we are going to the neighbor what kind of uh, situation it is you purchase a color tv this gentleman told color tv costs 5000 rupees if you deposit this 5000 rupees in a uh, maxima there is a company called maxima they give 24% interest but he gives first month interest only the rest of the second month he won't give he, he closed it and then uh, he won't give the principal also so he said uh, If we put this five thousand rupees in a, in a fixed deposit, we will get this much interest from it. It will uh, it will be a meaningful investment, uh, giving returns. Whereas, uh, if you purchase a color TV, it will be a dead investment. That is what he told. Then she told him, if you stop eating tonight's dinner, <laughs> I was there when this was God. I was there. I had this. So she told, if you stop eating this tonight's dinner. You will be saving 25 rupees, and uh, that will. Uh, otherwise, if you take dinner, it will be a dead investment. <laughs> Then I told this guy. He was my friend. He would go and purchase it. It will be a dead investment. This is Hiranyaksha. Always calculating. Aksha is uh, eyesight. The vision is on money. Well, always calculating. Hiranyaksha. So put uh, some money in uh, some stocks and go on calculating. Oh, this one. Now how much? Dip and go up, dip go up like that. This is Hiranyaksha, and then Hiranyakashipu, the other one. Uh, this is the second son of Diti. Diti has only two sons. Two are enough, you know. So you don't have to be the third one. This is Hiranyakashipu means Bhaga Parayana. If you look at Bhagavatam, you will see Hiranyaksha never enjoyed anything. He was only accumulating, and he died. While accumulating, he died. He is no more. Whereas Hiranyakashipu never earned one paisa. He was uh, enjoying all the wealth that was accumulated by Hiranyaksha. <laughs> And uh, he is Hiranyakashipu, always indulging, always endless indulgence. That is Hiranyakashipu. So our greed for wealth is Hiranyaksha, and our greed for sense pleasures is Hiranyakashipu. These are there in our heart. The two demons. Because their mother is also in the heart, diti, the sense of isolation, which is caused by adhyana, atma adhyana. That is the story. Now we really need Lakshmi in our life. To correct this situation, <laughs> we need Lakshmi in our life. So Lakshmi in our life, Lakshmi in our life. So when our life is over, Tara. Before this avatara was concluded, it will be withdrawn immediately. In our avatara, in not even in our, because devata etc. have to do namaskar and some prayers. That's why it prolonged to in our. Otherwise, it ends. <laughs> Then and there it ends. But uh, before the avatara ends, Lakshmi Devi, Lakshmi means what? Beauty and wealth. So there is a, a beauty and there is the wealth of knowledge and wealth of uh, sanctity, pavitrata. And also wealth of godliness, all that is there in that avatar. Or, or, or as the story goes, Lakshmi Devi came and joined him. Therefore, he became Lakshmi in the Shiva. And then he, the avatar, disappears. Lakshmi Devi comes and joins him, and then he disappears. Avatar ends here. That's why he is always Lakshmi in the Shiva, not the Shiva. Lakshmi in the Shiva. So. Uh, that means we want uh, beauty in life. We want uh, some meaningful wealth also. At the same time, we should not be greedy about wealth. We should not be like Hiranyaksha. Lakshmi must be there, but Hiranyaksha quality should not be there. Hiranyakashipu quality should not be there. Ultimately, jnana should happen. And uh, so, especially for the seekers of self knowledge, for the students of Vedanta, this stotra is very important. Otherwise, Shankara would not have composed it. So, he Lakshmi in the Singha. There, Prahlada is the kingpin of devotees, and the Prahlada is Jnani Bhakta. 
He is not Artha Bhakta. He Artha Bhakta is Gajendra. He is not even Artharthi Bhakta like Dhruva. He is not even Jijnasu Bhakta like Uddhava. He is a Jnani Bhakta. For Jnani, you know what is the most important uh, uh, trait of a Jnani? You know, you, you just understand, in the life of a Jnani, the persona is, is absent. Jnani is not a person. From the onlooker's point of view, Jnani is a person. What is a person? You just think, what is a person? A person who must have born, I was born. That is a person, you know, person means he has a date of birth. Now one who has a date of birth, can he be a Jnani? No. Because what is Jnana? Ajo Nitya Shashno Doyam Purana. That is Jnana. Atma was never born and it is never going to die. That is Jnana. And now I was born on so and so date, I was born. Is he a Jnani? No. So Jnani is not a person. Based on the birth and death, a person is defined. Jnani is not a person. Jnani doesn't have an age. He is neither old nor young nor middle aged. There is no age for Jnani. Really? There is an age only when you are conscious of that age. When you are not conscious of it, it is not there. And then Jnani has no relationships because the entire universe is his family. Therefore, you see, I have one family, I have a few relationships constituting a family. Then the entire universe stands separated from this isolation. So for a Jnani, the entire universe is his, all universes. His brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers depends upon age, sons, daughters. That is what it is. Entire universe. Therefore, in which respect he is a person? He doesn't own anything. Person means he must have some personal property. He doesn't own anything. This is a jnani. Therefore, a jnani, uh, so Prahlada is a jnani. And therefore, this totra. Uh, in the context of Nrsim Havatara is all about Jnana only. It is nothing about other than Jnana. Lakshmi Nrsim Ha Mamadehi Karavalambam. You see, I took so much time to explain that only. We have so many verses before us. But anyway, I have not put any target for myself because I am not doing the entire Stotra anyway. So, whichever verses I could conclude, I will do. The rest you can read, not a problem. So, here Lakshmi Nrsim Ha. Mama Karavalambam Dehi. This is, a, this is called a Karavalamba Stotram. Karavalamba is same as a Sharanagati. Both are one and the same. Karavalamba is a very powerful word and the vision is a very sacred vision. You see, a person who is a drowning, uh, who is a drowning and uh, he was looking for some support so that he won't drown and he can keep his uh, uh, face above water and uh, keep alive himself and then eventually he needs the support to come out of the, the abyss and so that support to which he can hold on to with his hands desperately he is looking for some support such a person if he sees a drowning person if he, this is the proverb if he sees a, a blade of grass going by, he will hold on to it. How a blade of grass is going to help him? Will it hold him? No. But still, he is desperate. He, can, he would hold on to even a blade of grass, knowing full well that it may not hold him, but still he hopes. So that is the situation. In that situation, the word karavalamba becomes relevant. So, so he is desperately looking. The drowning person puts up his hands, so that because he is going down, he cannot keep his face above water anymore. So the, the, the best thing that he could do is one last ditch effort with a faint hope that I, he may be saved. He puts his hand above. In fact, he cannot put both hands above. One hand he drops below and puts just one hand above. Did you not see such a picture drawn by some of the artists? Just one, both hands above he cannot put. That much energy also he doesn't have. So you cannot do that while drowning, you cannot do that. Just one hand. And if there is somebody who can hold on to that hand and just pull up, the person will be saved. And that is not enough. 
eventually the saving person should keep holding that hand till such a point that he comes out of the abyss on to the solid ground. Till then the hand must hold. So such a support is called Karavalamba. Now, we need this Karavalamba, you know, uh, in life, uh, so uh, uh, we need this support. But unfortunately, in our life, uh, we assume that money will support us. That is how we assume. That is why we, that is why we accumulate money. You see, we, we have to look at uh, certain basic, uh, uh, basic premises of life, basic philosophy of life. We are living a life, and so there must be a philosophy that guides us through this life. What is that philosophy? So I need, I, I need security. There is no doubt about it, because I am insecure. As a person, as a limited being, isolated from the whole, I am insecure. And so I need security. So where from I get this security? So we have all kinds of muddled up thinking in this regard. One of the ideas is that money, at least partially, will provide security. We worship all kinds of false gods for security sake. So one of the false gods is money. So by accumulating a certain amount of money, we will be saved. There cannot be a worse imagination than that. It is all uh, uh, an imagination, there is no truth at all in it. Money will give you some purchasing power, that there it ends. Beyond that it cannot help. So, I need to purchase a cup of coffee, I need money. I need uh, to purchase a dinner, I need money. I, I need to purchase a flight ticket, I need money. All the such things money can give. Money cannot give you security. But uh, what, how we look at money, we look at money as a source of security, as karavalamba. I can hold on to it so that it keeps me above floating there. This is the notion. This notion is far from truth. Karavalamba. Then uh, we assume that power, political power, or any power for that matter, will give us security. People uh, run after power for gaining security. So, power could be in various forms. For example, by gaining government uh, job, I will uh, gain security, because it gives uh, some power. By getting promotion, I will be happy, it will give some security. Similarly, by gaining political power. In fact, uh, why people, uh, they struggle hard to get acquainted with these political leaders. Do you know that? Because uh, they assume that the political leaders will save them. Who could save Saddam Hussein? <laughs> and uh, uh, you, you look at uh, the Indian political situation. Today the person is occupying the highest throne, the next day the person is in the dumps. And uh, we go and attach ourselves to that person so that that person is in a higher position and so can save us. What a misfortune. How that person can save us? Because uh, that person is holding on to the power desperately hoping that uh, that power will save that person. And now we want to hold on to that person. Anyway, while holding you should see whether you are holding on to a proper support or not. So, just rubbing shoulders with all these politicians, assuming that they will one day save our neck, there cannot be any worse delusion than that. In fact, you should be able to turn your back to all these people of power. The power that they hold is just nothing. There is no sense in that power. They will lose it in a jiffy, I tell you. And assuming that they hold on to there, they will have that power. How they will save us? It is all imagination. So, I tell you, this is another false god that we, that we are accustomed to worship. It is a wrong, it is a false god. It won't save. And unfortunately, we learn that lesson in a very bitter way. So, it is another false god. <laughs> like that it goes on, the list goes on. Relationships. 
So relationships will save us. The lonely person thinks that I don't have any relations. How, how shall I live? What will happen to me? If I, he is healthy and hale and healthy. But if I get favor, what will happen? If I get favor. When you did not get favor, you know. Already by thinking of the favor, there is a little favor in the heart. The favor of fear is already there. The bacteria has had to attack him. But the fear has already entered into his mind. And so I, lonely, I am lonely, I, am, I don't have anybody to no for no sons, no daughters, no daughter in laws etc. So how will I live? This is what he thinks. And then a, a gentleman who has all these relationships, he is worried, none of these people take care of me. What will happen to me? That is his worry. Both are worried. Both are worried. So the relationships, getting attached to the relationships, son, daughter, daughter-in-law, brother-in-law, this, that, and thereby getting saved, it is another false god. It is, it is utterly false god. They, nobody is going to save. Ultimately what happens, you know, a person whom I never knew, he will save me. That is how it will happen. That is the truth of life. Nobody, he, such a, a, a good Samaritan will come our way and save us. That is how it happens. So, so this way uh, we have, and, uh, we have uh, all kinds of false gods in our in our mind. And uh, you see, there is a fact of life. Uh, the, the fact of Vedanta is like this: you cannot serve God and Mammon simultaneously. I tell you, either you serve the Godhead or you serve the Mammon. No, no, thoda ye, thoda wo ye nahi chalega. So. So you cannot sell. You have money, but don't depend upon money for security. You have, if you have whatever power is there, you have it. Hold on to it and do your duty. But don't expect that uh, to save you. Similarly, you have relationships, bless them, love them. And uh, bless them, fully bless them. You give everything to them. In fact, you can give all to them. Why, why to hold on to anything? So that you can be secure. Suppose, uh, an elderly person is holding on to a million. He is the most insecure person. He give up, give it away, and just stand naked under the sky. I mean, without hope, I don't own anything. Then you are safe and secure. How, how means one has to discover it. How, how I don't, how, how can I tell that? But people think that holding on to wealth will save them. Wrong. So, therefore the, the idea is, don't hold on to all these uh, pieces of grass while uh, blades of grass while drowning. They won't save you. There is only one that can save you. That is Ishvara. Mama Dehi Karavalam. Now, there is only one hand available to hold on to. With that one hand, uh, what will you hold on to? How many things you can hold on to? You have to hold on to Ishvara means you have to leave everything else. While holding on to three, four things, you cannot hold on to Ishwara. Leave everything and hold on to Ishwara. That is the prayer. Mama Dehi Karavalambam. So, but I tell you, this is called Sharanagati. The Sharanagati one has to practice. It won't come easily. The Sharanagati has to be persistently practiced in meditation. That is, practice means what? Meditation is the practice. So one has to persistently practice this. Then only all the, the hold, these false gods, false gods means, I mean, the, the false things that we are holding on to, that hold, that will leave us. Sometimes what happens is, we don't know whether we are holding on to it or that is holding on to us. So that the grip, it, we begin it and from that side also it happens. So that grip, the mind has, mind is held under the grip of all these false notions. So all those notions, they take some effort to get neutralized. And that effort is the prayer. And prayer should not be mechanical. Mechanical prayer doesn't work. It becomes habitual, you know. Every day I am habitual uh, to say a few prayers and so I end up saying it. It is good, it is good compared to what? Compared to not saying any prayer, it is good. 
They put, okay, I am doing good means what? So I pass in ninth class, I am good, I am good. You are good when compared with the seventh class student. That's all. That is the only goodness. No more good. So, in fact, I am sorry to, I am tempted to say this. This repetitive, uh, repetitive habit forming, repetitive, there is no heart in it. Lakshmi Indra Simha Mamadehi Karavalambam. If you say that, you should not say it with lips, you should say it from heart. You should feel it only, whether you say it or not, that is not the point. You should feel it. From the mouth, from the lips, it should go into the mind, and from the mind, it should go into heart. Mind is knowing, heart is feeling. So, you should allow it to move from head to heart. So then only you are doing a prayer. Till then it won't work. It will be repetitive. Lakshmi Yendu Singh Mamadehi Karavalamam. Are who is there? That uh, crow is there lifting away the spoon. You know, spoon also. <laughs> so these spoons are kept outside for washing, along with all other dishes to be washed. The spoon is also there. And this crow is, is, it is searching for a piece of uh, some food there. Is crow. And uh, it cannot lift a vessel. A vessel or a cup it cannot lift. It can take away a spoon because uh, some food is holding on to that spoon, some sweet item. So this crow is about to lift it and take away so that it will keep on a wall and sit there and eat it. So this Lakshmi uh, spoon is being carried away by the crow. So throw a stone on that crow. So this way. That repetitive, where is Lakshmi Vishnu, where is Karavarama, all this poor and crow is there. In the mouth it is there. So I gave an extreme example, but generally a point has to be made, that's why examples are given like that. So the point is, it is not enough to say, it is necessary to know, not enough to know, it is necessary to feel. Then it will happen. You, you get an insight. You know what is the insight? Are, I am in the protection of Ishvara. Ishvara, Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama. Now I have surrendered myself to Sri Krishna. So, and then you will not feel any insecurity further. The sense of insecurity will slowly melt away, like ice melting under the sun. Mountains of ice, slowly they will melt away. It takes a little time to melt. Sun should shine. If sun is shining, the mountain of ice will melt away. Like that it happens. Therefore, it's a very powerful prayer. Lakshmi Narasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam. Okay, let, let me see. Uh, so in the first verse, Shankaracharya is presenting a, a verbal picture. Shabda Chitra it is called. A verbal, he is painting a picture using words. So that uh, you can visualize a, a picture, a form. Because it is Saguna, Saguna Upasana, you know. Not only Saguna, Saguna Sakara. Further crystallization, concretization. So you can, you may begin like that. It will be nice. Saguna Sakara. Eventually what we will do, the mind rises above Sakara and holds on to Saguna. And then ultimately it rises above Saguna. Then what happens? Will it stay in Nirguna? You see, Nirguna is not a thing. With reference to Saguna, we said Nirguna. Therefore, it, it abides in the Vastu, which is neither Saguna nor Nirguna, which is neither Sakara nor Nirakara. You see, one gentleman told me, we worship only Nirguna, we don't worship Saguna. So, <laughs> that, that is wrong, you know. So, the, he has not understood the point. It's not that there are two gods, one is Saguna and another is Nirguna. God is neither Saguna nor Nirguna. When you look at God with a particular perspective, God appears as Saguna and that is only a perspective. It is not the ultimate reality. That is not absolute. It is only a perspective. So you need another perspective to negate this perspective. And so it is like one thorn is removed with the help of another thorn and then both thorns are left behind and you rise above into the Vastu. So Saguna, Saguna, you see Saguna is a, it is a incidental or situational, a need-based Upasana. 
absolutely thing a vastu is not saguna oh that means vastu is not having saguna vastu is not saguna yeah absolutely not that is the statement called nirguna nirguna means absolutely it is not saguna oh then it is nirguna no no they don't add one more quality so it is neither saguna nor nirguna that is the vastu so uh, so to begin with sakara saguna ultimately nirguna and ultimately the vastu which is neither this nor that which transcends all opposites that is the procedure therefore in that context shankara is introducing a form shrimat payonidhi niketana hey, niketana means who abides whose dhama whose residence location locale where does bhagwan lakshmi narsimha abides he resides in the kshera samudra the milky ocean i tell you the milky ocean is the pure heart of a devotee that is the milky ocean because the hrudaya heart is always compared with the water body that is how even kali mardana etc that the water body which was become which has become vicious uh, and so poisonous and thereby made pure by made pure by shri krishna so that is also symbolic in the sense that the heart which is filled with all kinds of impurities so i will tell that what that will come so that heart is the that, that is the lake poisonous lake and when that lake is pure it is called the heart is pure a pure heart is compared with the milky ocean it is the milky milky payonidhi niketa and bhagwan abides in a pure heart what do you mean by pure heart bhagwan abides in pure heart bhagwan doesn't abide in an impure heart he abides everywhere sun reflects in murky water as well as pure water but in murky water the reflection cannot be appreciated in pure water it is so clear that's all so blessed are those who are pure in the heart for they come to know god like that it is said therefore that heart is the payonidhi that is the milky ocean and uh, and uh, you see it is always compared with ocean because the heart which is the manaha buddhi manaha buddhi hrudayam synonymously used in this context so it has infinite potentiality you you have to recognize that fact you see what we do we are obsessed with the body and therefore our potentiality is uh, covered up so i i am with my little body with a weak heart i am here with a medical insurance and some medical prescription that, that is wrong you know you are covering up your own inner potentiality there is infinite potentiality in you and as i identify myself with a body and when the body becomes sick as it is bound to become then i become sick unfortunately i need not become sick i can remain in my potentiality in my divinity and the body recognize the body as sick and do some service to it that way in fact if the idea if the obsession with the body is reduced the body will be healthy this uh, this principle you should know anyway so shimat payonidhi niketana and so in the heart uh, so when the mind is impure filled with all kinds of wrong notions and wrong uh, values uh, then uh, the infinite potentiality that is there in the person in the, the source that is lost that is covered up therefore the heart in its pure state is infinite potential it has therefore it is always compared with the ocean shrimat payonidhi niketana in the ocean like heart that it in that infinite potentiality that is there there as that infinite potential bhagavan resides shrimat payonidhi niketana chakrapane bhagavan has a, a weapon in his hand a, a weapon weapon for what weapon for putting an end to all ills what is that weapon chakra discuss chakra you see if you take the meaning literally then chakra is not a very comfortable weapon real speaking there are much better weapons than that chakra is what 
you cannot target it you cannot uh, aim it properly you, you you just do it and it may fall sideways it may not go to the enemy also so uh, that is not the point chakra is weapon means uh, bhagavan's weapon is kala chakra that is the weapon kala chakra the word kala chakra is very important in the buddhist literature also bhagavan buddha also talked about it kala chakra so the, the, because uh, time is cyclic the chronology time is twofold there are two times one is the chronological time the time by which the universe is running because universe is a phenomenal universe it's in motion motion implies a time and what time it is not as an arrow like time it is chronological time this arrow like time is in the mind of the individual this is jiva jiva srishti ishvar srishti arrow like time is jiva srishti cyclic time is ishvar srishti so in ishvara's creation there is no past present and future sunrise is it past or present or future yesterday sunrise is past today sunrise is present is it like that no it is not like that sunrise is same always there is nothing like past or any such thing it is the mind with its uh, memory structure structure converts the sunrise into past present and future sunrise is neither past nor present nor future sunrise is sunrise every so morning evening again morning evening is a cyclic time so morning is what present okay then evening came then what happens to morning in an arrow like time what happens to morning it must be past then again it is coming how past is coming if the time is arrow like how past is coming so time is not arrow like time is cyclic in cyclic time morning evening only again morning will come evening again morning will come that is the kala chakra this kala chakra it puts an end to everything it is the weapon of the greatest power the ravana is devoured by this kala chakra these devatas go to vishnu and request vishnu this ravana is a, he has become a scourge for us so put an end to him then bhagwan says okay i'll put an end to him okay then do it no no you have to wait you have to wait that that waiting is kala chakra that is the idea that kala will happen and in that kala rama will come and uh, he will kidnap and then he will uh, die all that kala should have kala kala chakra kala brings everything to its end it not only puts an end to ravana it puts an end to the incarnation of rama also everything ends that is bhagavan's chakra that he holds in hand because he has created kala he is sustaining kala he has to initiate it kala and so he holds this kala as a weapon in his hand chakra pane bhogendra bhoga mani ranjita punya murte punya means auspicious form bhagwan's form is very auspicious in the saguna sakara he 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 is reclining on on the coiled serpent bhogendra bhoga mani ranjita punya murte that ananta shayana coiled serpent it stands for infinite power the power of the universe you know so for bhagwan's maya shakti alone manifests as the universe so so bhagwan is doing these three jobs of creation sustenance and annihilation through his power so that is the meaning of saying bhagwan is reclining on a coiled serpent it is like a president is now sitting in his oval office he is sitting in president's chair means what he can really wield his power now that is the meaning similarly vishnu is reclining on his ananta shayana means he wields all the infinite power by which this universe is created sustained etc he is wielding it that is the meaning of it that is the source of power president's chair means what chair means what it is symbolic you know the power of the president is a, is a visualized as to abide in that chair as he sits in that chair and signs a paper a piece of paper a bit of paper he signs immediately from jagjia 
ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ट्रूप्स विथ आर्मर्ड व्हीकल्स एक्सेट्रा दे आर पुस्ड इन टू ए बेग ह्यूज बेली ऑफ एर एरोप्लेन एंड दे लैंड इन बागदाद ही साइंस ए बिट ऑफ पेपर सिटिंग इन हिस्स छे दैट इज द पावर ऑफ ए प्रेसिडेंट देन यू इमेजिन द पावर ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द यूनिवर्स दैट इज विष्णु सो दैट पावर इज सिम्बलाइज बाय दट कॉइल सेपेंट देन इन द the poetic description that serpent it has multiple hoods and it is all poetic convention multiple hoods means this power of the universe is not one power like the electricity is there is it just one power that it makes all bulbs glow only that much not nothing else no no it has many as facets what else it can cool it can heat it can fan it can move so many things it can do it is like a multiple hooded serpent like bhagwan's power is also like sun is bhagwan's power moon is bhagwan's power all the stars are bhagwan's power earth going around the sun is bhagwan's power a bird flying is also bhagwan's power all devatas are bhag the various facets of the same cosmic power this is the meaning of multiple hoods how many facets are there infinite there is a word for infinite sahasra सहस्रा मीन्स इन्फिनेट शतम सहस्रम शतम मीन्स अनंत सहस्रम आलो मीन्स अनंत इन ए गिवेन कॉन्टेक्स्ट फॉर सहस्र फणी इन्फिनेट हूड्स बट इन ए पिक्चर यू कैन नॉट हैव इन्फिनेट हूड्स यू पुट ए फ्यू इवन सहस्रा यू कैन नॉट हैव थाउजेंड यू कैन हैव फ्यू पुट सो देन द पवर इज वॉट पवर इज ऑल ब्रिलियंट डैजलिंग दट इज हाउ पवर You need not to search for a power. Where is power? Where is power? It hits you in the face. That's why this hood. All I am putting it symbolically. So these hoods have this dazzling gemstones upon them. This is how poets say. If you come across a serpent, it will have only one hood, and it will not have any gemstone sitting on that hood. But it has a mark. Which is a brilliant. When compared with the other texture of the body, this mark is brilliant, shines, and the, it is a shining mark, and it resembles in a way a gemstone. Therefore, poets say like that. Poetic license, yeah. poet will say like that. He will draw a line huh? and says, "This is the line of uh, human fate." Like that, he says, "What? What is human fate?" Uh, something like that. He will say like that. The poet is like that. so he draws a circle and so says this is the circle of life he a modern art if you visit you will know all these things <laughs> museum of modern art really so poetic license they they imagine uh, so many things in a very simple looking forms that is how therefore this money is the dazzling power of that uh, maya shakti and so this money is throwing so much dazzling light and bhagwan's murti form is beautifully shining in that loke in that dhama you all are addresses he he rama like that every word is an address so he shrimat payonidhi niketana he chakrapane he bhogendra bhogi maniranjita punya murte he yogisha yogi is one who has understood his oneness with the whole that is yogi so a devotee chartha a jnani and who is the lord of yogis ishvara shri krishna or lakshmi narasimha yogi isha shashvata if he wields the power of time as a weapon then he must be he must be beyond that power it cannot hit him the power of time comes and hits him no so shashvata shashvata means he is beyond time timeless chatha so he, he doesn't come under uh, the spell of time sharanya bhava dhip sharanya sharanya another word here it looks as if it is samasa no it is not samasa sharanya there must be a gap there So a, a, a gap of a small gap. That word appears separately. Sharanya means what surrendering to. 
before you surrender, taking refuge, before you take refuge, you should see whether that thing is worth or not. Right? Suppose I take refuge with a member of parliament. <laughs> this came like that. Once uh, there was a minister from South, minister of chemicals or whatever. He was minister for eighteen days <laughs> in uh, Vajpayee's government. He took oath and after eighteen days Vajpayee's government lost by one vote. He was minister for eighteen days. And in these eighteen days what happened is, I know this case, one gentleman, he was in a nice job with a private firm. This person called him, you come and work as my secretary. So he resigned here <laughs> and joined him as his secretary. Secretary to a central minister. He can fly back and forth from Madras. He was from Madras. So and, uh, he had a lot of power and uh, so much of a personal secretary. He is a very big post. Okay. On the 18th day, that minister, uh, he lost his job. He is a politician. He will again strive for it. Whereas this person went back to his company. They told him, we don't need you anymore. <laughs> so he lost his job. He doesn't have a job now. His job just lasted for only 18 days. Then he told, I made a mistake. I, I should have that uh, understanding that the, by holding on to this kind of a shaky government, we don't get anything out of it. He should have won it. So that way, we should not go and uh, take refuge in some worthless thing. You know. Okay, you tell us what is it that is worth taking refuge in? Only one thing. And that is Ishvara, Sharanya. This is a, an insight. One has to carefully grow into it. I, I cannot really verbalize it. Uh, it's a glory. It is a, a thing one, one you have to very deeply experience it within yourself. I cannot verbalize it. You take refuge in Ishvara. Ishwara means, no, no, first let me know Ishwara, then I will take refuge. It is not going to happen. How are you going to know Ishwara? Ishwara is infinite. You are not going to know Ishwara. So, what is not Ishwara only, you can know. For example, timeless is Ishwara. Time you know. Timeless is Ishwara. Now, did you know Ishwara? You cannot know. Time you can know. Mind can know time. Mind cannot know timeless. When mind stops being conscious of time, then it is in timeless. That, that way only. Okay, let me understand what is timeless. You cannot understand. You can understand what is time. So anyway, there is only one thing that is worth taking refuge in, and that is Ishvara. Sharanya, Bhavabdhipota. Why? World is not uh, is a good refuge. For example, home, I make a, I build a home, is it not a refuge? No, it is not a refuge. It is a burden. The neck. It's a burden to the neck. It is not a refuge. You, you see, a person hugged a bear, <laughs> thinking that it is a log. He is a, getting swept in, in a deluge of a... Uh, uh, in a watery deluge. So floods were there, and so everything was getting swept away, and this person also was being swept, and then one bear also was getting swept. And so he thought this bear looked like a log, and so he went and took refuge in it. He held it. Then uh, the bear held it to him, <laughs> because he is also, uh, the bear also needs refuge. The bear held it to him, now, so mutually holding each other, they will float or they will go down? <laughs> they will go down. By mutually holding each other, they will not float. If one of them is floating, then by holding on to it, the other one also will float. If both are going down, now by holding on to each other, how they will uh, float? So, then this person wanted to come out of it. But uh, the bear doesn't want to come out of it, so it still holds on to it. So, our worldly goals are like that. You get a Blue Cross insurance and so you will be healthy. Yeah, but. Yeah, silly as that. 
as silly as that. Nothing more than that. You may still have insurance. I am not saying anything against the practicalities of life. I am not saying anything. But the vision must be very clear. So, I may have an insurance card in my pocket. That is different. But uh, I take refuge in Ishvara. I am not the body. Body needs medicine. I don't need any medicine. The body may, is born to become sick. Don't think that the body will remain permanently healthy. There is no such thing. It is bound to become sick. But I am not going to become sick. It is the body which is limited, not I. So that Viveka, then where do I belong? I do not belong in the body. I do not belong to the body. I do not belong to the mind. I do not belong to the world. I belong to Ishvara. That is how it is. So, Bhavabdhi Pota. This uh, samsara is a, a deluge, it is. It is abdhi. It won't support you, it won't uphold you, it will drown you, it will uh, uh, take you down. It's an abyss. And so you jump into the abyss and hope uh, that it will uphold us. No. Samsara is an ocean and uh, it won't uphold us. You need a boat to cross this ocean of samsara, uh, crossing later, but first to keep a float. You need a boat so that you can stand or sit in it. And then you are alive and then you can cross. That boat you need. And pota is a boat. And that boat is Ishvara. Bhava Dhipota Lakshmi Mrasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam. You see, the idea is like what is this Karavalamba? Mamadehi Karavalambam. When you say, you hold on to me, keep me afloat, and eventually take me out of this abyss, when you say that, you say, Mamadehi Karavalambam, that means, sir, that is your last act, then nothing else will remain. Then, then only it is called Karavalambam. What is the meaning of Karavalambam? Kara Avalamba. So hold, lift the hand, Kara, so that it can be held oh. and taken out. Karavalamba. So, holding the hand, that is Karavalamba. Please do that. Karaval Lakshmi Indrasimha Mama Dehi Karavalambam. Mama Dehi, please give me what? Karavalambam, holding of the hand. So, how he will give holding of the hand? Because I am stretching my hand. Now I, I have done my share. I cannot do it. Having stretched my hand, I cannot lift myself up. This is the last act I can do. If you don't hold my hand, then I am lost. I will drown into the abyss. Therefore, He Lakshmi Vrishnuha, Mama Karavalambam Dehi. So this is a self-surrender. You see, when, I am, when a person is no longer attached to anything of the world, he has done his share. That is what he can do. Suppose he is holding on to this, he is holding on to so many things. He is yet to do his share. Therefore Bhagavan will wait. Bhagavan is not in a hurry. Bhagavan is not in a hurry. Avidito devaha nainam bhunakti. This is a brahadaranyata. Devaha ishvaraha enam na bhunakti. Bhunakti means palayati. He won't protect him. Aviditaha. Unless you seek protection from Ishvara, he won't protect. He will wait. It is like a mother and child relationship. Ramakrishna Brahmasa used to tell this example. Mother puts toys before the child and she is busy with her work. She won't even look at him. <laughs> then he is playing with the toys. As long as he is playing with the toys, mother won't look at him. Then he rejects all the toys, he is fed up with the toys and he cries. Then mother notices, oh, he is not interested in the toys anymore. Okay, she notices him. But she won't rush to him. She notices him. Then he cries. Amma, like that he cries. Then she just keeps everything aside, whatever she may be doing. She just leaves everything aside and rushes to him and protects him. That is how it is. As long as the child is, is a interested in the toys, <laughs> mother is not in a hurry to protect. 
So, Amadehi Karavalamba. So, I am not attached to anything of this world. By them I have done my share. The rest will be done by the, that higher power. How do you know that it will be done? You, you should be able to know it because it is the higher power which brought me this far, thus far. I did not bring myself thus far. It is the higher power which brought me thus far. It gave me eyesight, it gave me faculty of hearing, it gave me mind to capable of thinking, it gave me a body, it gave me life, it gave everything. It gave me a persona, it gave me knowledge, and it gave me devotion, the capacity to trust, and now it gave me the wisdom to surrender. Having given that much, so the higher power which brought me thus far will take care of me. And uh, in fact, uh, the desire for truth, it, is, uh, it, is, it was prompted by that higher power only. And uh, the wisdom of surrendering to Ishvara is also a blessing of that higher power only. Therefore, the higher power, I did not ask the higher power to give me eyesight. I, it was given already. So, the higher power which brought me thus far, will take care of me in the in later also. It, it is the same power that kept me alive and uh, you can give any name to it. You can call it the Brahman or you can call it Ishvara or in a Saguna situation you can call it Lakshmi Narasimha. Either way, that higher power which brought me thus far will take me to the highest truth and, allow, and will not allow me to drown in these things of the world. You see, it is not the wealth, it is not the bhogas, it is not the worldly things that brought us this thus far. No, it looks like that. It is the life within which it makes all living situations possible that brought us up to this point. And that alone is going to take us further. And therefore, instead of surrendering to the false things of the world, I learn not to surrender to the only reality which is Ishvara, which is abiding in the heart as Lakshmi Narasimha. Mamadehi Karavalam. Then the next verse Samsara Dhora Gahane, Samsara Dhora Gahane, Charato Murare, Charato Murare, Marogra Bhikara Bhuga Pravaraditasya. You say again, Maro Grabhikara, Maro Grabhikara, Mruga Pravaraditasya, Mruga Pravaraditasya, Artasya, Artasya, Matsara Nidagha Nipiditasya, Matsara Nidagha Nipiditasya, Lakshmi Nirsimha Mamadehi Karavalambam, Lakshmi Nirsimha Mamadehi Karavalambam. So we say it again and again because the mind doesn't leave things easily. You see, the, there is a need for repetition. Abhyasa, there is a need. Abhyasa in cha kaunteya, vairagya in cha grihyate. You have to take the mind into your command. Okay, I said the Lakshmi and the Simham, Amadehi Karavalambam, the job is done. It won't work like that. You have to say it a second time. You have to say it a third time. <coughs> because uh, if we watch our lives, we can understand that we have surrendered nothing. <laughs> and uh, we can also notice that we are not really ready to surrender anything. <laughs> really. People don't surrender anything. Just they add uh, one more word to their vocabulary, surrender. A word is added to the jargon. And so every day they repeat it also. It becomes repetitive and habitual. So, uh, uh, so the vocabulary is not going to help. And then I tell you, we make a mistake which goes against the spirit of Sharanagati. In fact, uh, Sharanagati of the highest kind. There is only one Sharanagati. We say like that just to emphasize, to give a emphasis, Sharanagati and Atma Jnana are one and the same. 
They are not two different things. In the language of bhakti, we call it shakanagati. In the language of atma jnana, we call it atma jnana. In the language of Vedanta, we call it atma jnana. You see, I am not the body. I am neither the body nor its expressions. And I am not concerned about the good or bad of the body. I am not the mind. Therefore, the mind's problems are not my problems. This is Atma Jnana. Okay? The body is put in place by Ishvara. It is Ishvara who is running it and who is taking it along. And its fate will be determined by that Ishvara. I need not have any particular agenda about it. The mind is a faculty given by Ishvara and he will take care of that. Therefore, I am surrendering to Ishvara. This is the language of bhakti. Is there any difference between the two? In, in content, there is no difference. In the language, there is a difference. Then, you see, what we do is, we say, Aham Brahmasmi or Atma, etc. But we surrender nothing. So we neither surrender the body nor surrender the mind. We are still obsessed with all the issues of the body and of the mind. So just we have the vocabulary or jargon of Atma Jnana, nothing more than that. It is always better to have some vocabulary than not having any vocabulary. I agree with that. But it is not enough to have vocabulary, you know. The empty plate, the, the plate in which various food items are there, it is better than an empty plate. But just they are sitting there and I tie my hands behind and uh, so how uh, how it going how it is going to work? So I have to partake of it, you know. Similarly, Atma Jnana. Similarly, Bhakti also. You just stay in the presence of the Lord and repeat all the right words, but uh, just feel nothing, you surrender nothing. Uh, that is not Sharnagati. So I am saying this because I can only say what is not Sharanagati. That is enough to say. That's why I am saying Neti Neti Tyadesha, always it is like that. And uh, one mistake also we do. The mistake is uh, we use Ishvara as a peg to hang on our problems. He says you surrender by you surrender Sharanagati Sharana, you surrender just hanging on the problems, convert Ishvara into a peg and hang on all your problems onto that peg, is it called Sharanagati? It is not Sharanagati. So suppose you go to a suppose you go to a worldly person and they say, Sir, I have these problems, so I need a job, etc. I, I am in suffering. So will you please help me? He is a great man and very kind person. He told okay, I will help you. I will help you. So then uh, after five minutes, if you go and again ask him, Sir, I have this problem, so I am seeking your help. So again ask him, you tell, you just wait, I will help you. Suppose you again go and uh, you want to put every one of your problems into his pocket, he will ask you, you go or I cannot do it. So even in the world of affairs, you are supposed to have some trust on the other person. He will protect you. Similarly, you seek protection from Ishwara. Hey, Ishwara Rakshamam Pahimam. Then you wait. He will protect you. But we cannot wait. You know why? Because we are not sure. We are in a hurry. There is a hurry. Mind is already judging. Okay, come on, you said Pahimam, but will he be able to Pahimam? <laughs> and will he Pahimam? So mind has its own doubts, its own calculations, its own judgments. And therefore, we, have, we use Ishvara as a peg to hang on to, hang all our problems on to. Sometimes uh, people convert the Guru also into that. Very unfortunate. They don't want to learn Vedanta. Once Kanchi Kamakota Pradhavati, Puriyavara Swami, he told, he told publicly, they come to me to solve worldly problems. <laughs> Nobody comes to me seeking blessings for self-knowledge or Sharanagati. Sir, help us to do Sharanagati of Ishvara. Help us 
to follow dharma fully help us to gain vairagya help us to gain viveka help us to gain atmajnana nobody wants this sir our brother in law is not functioning properly will you bless how he swami said swami ji said how can i help i am as helpless as you are how can i help you he was saying that way if you have a, a, a worldly problem i appreciate it i can sympathize with you so is that what you want from me sympathy you want okay you have plenty of my sympathy other than that uh, uh, how how can that is what he said so we convert the guru also into a peg we surrender to nothing that is our problem we should learn to surrender so uh, it is not enough just to say the right words you know what is self surrender sharanagati you know what is sharanagati sharanagati is the surrender of all self concern and self interest can you do that all self interest i surrender and all self concern i surrender to ishwar if you do that now this moment you will become a liberated soul it is like that you you don't need to do anything more than that that is enough you are a liberated soul and you will become a realized soul now and here all self concern and all self interest has to be surrendered the very tough therefore we need to practice it abhyasa is needed gradually but i tell you i should i said the negative part of it the positive part of it is you do it do it perseveringly abhyasa then slowly you will teach the mind that it should drop the self concerns it should drop and it should drop the self interest it should drop that you we should not be like the kids you see in my childhood i planted a few seeds in the soil it was a rainy season started what is the time 6:15 only 6:15 ah okay so 6:17 all right the rainy season started and so my mother was planting a few seeds so for vegetables crepes etc which give vegetables so i wanted to do myself my own separate planting so i took a few seeds of these bean seeds you know and i planted so morning we have done this holidays you know So whatever high school days morning i have planted and went to the high school by evening i came i went to that place where i put these seeds nothing is there <laughs> there is the sprout is not there then i just removed the soil a little and the saw the seed is just sitting as it is it is not doing anything it is nothing is there in the seed then uh, uh, maybe something may be there inside you know so just to check it and again i can put back so i took it and nothing is there <laughs> then i put back then my mother told me what are you doing why are you taking them out so no, i wanted to check oh that is not the way <laughs> so we are like that what she did she planted the seeds and just forgot about them forgot about them means it is not forgetfulness she just surrendered the soil the water the rainy season the bija shakti the bija the seed has a power so and the kala kala is the ultimate power and the soul surrendered having planted the seed surrendered and after a week they were all in nice sprouts suppose it doesn't sprout accepted accepted that also accepted therefore so surrendering is a is an abhyasa one has to do it and so the positive side of it is as you practice the surrender what you have to surrender i am telling you what you have to surrender is not some imaginary thing so okay we surrender this we surrender sarnagata tanu mana dhana okay tanu mana dhana you should know what is tanu mana dhana so all self interest and all self concern must be surrendered self interest takes the shapes of desires 
self concern takes the shape of worry and fear so when you surrender these two things there is a real freedom and you will experience that freedom a glimpse of surrender is enough to convince you to very deeply make you understand within you that my god this is the way to live this is the secret of life like that you will be able to appreciate that's why sharanagati has to be perseveringly practiced in meditation it has to be practiced so with a feeling of total surrender if you say lakshmi narasimha mama dehi karavalambam daily you say that you will start to grow and you will realize the importance of sharanagati that is very important suppose children are there we are worried about their future having made all arrangements for the very systematic growth having made all the required arrangements now we should stop worry mm-hmm. we should allow the time to take we have put the child uh, the, the son or daughter in the university and then i am very half an hour you go and poke it uh, nothing will happen you know <laughs> like those seeds so just leave it alone you do your uh, something more to be done do it Uh, like watering the seeds something more to be done do it what all you have to do is just to give put some cash in the account that is all you have to do they will take care of the rest and now surrender you see every child that goes into the university is not going to be university first that also one should recognize there is their own prarabdha like seeds ten seeds won't sprout exactly the same way there will be differences and we accept that that is surrender to acceptance is also surrender therefore as you learn to surrender then you learn to relax when you relax and when that is the strength of mind when you have strength of mind you will help the other person people are very anxious to help others but first to help yourself before help others help yourself means be strong so that you can help others that is what i mean i am not suggesting you be selfish first and then uh, i am not suggesting that way be strong enough wise enough so that you can help others you see once uh, we mahatma swar sitting in a place and discussing the vedanta some vedanta discussion so uh, some shastra sadas one young brahmachari came he was a thin uh, little weak uh, but he wanted he, he was overwhelmed to see half a dozen mahatmas who were doing elaborate discussions on vedanta my god this is something amazing so he has a value for some of the vedantic texts and all that so he was overwhelmed it was summer very hot humid weather he started fanning us so we were all discussing and in a sabha then suddenly some nice wind came then oh he is fanning okay god bless him brahmachari doing some seva then suddenly he fell <laughs> so then the mahatma sir stopped the discussion and other than bhai he is fell he fell unconscious something happened to him what weather you know then one of the they 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 asked somebody to bring some water and sprinkled on his face and he became normal apparently and he sat then he was asked what happened to you why did you fall he told in my my love and my my joy of serving all of you i i became unconscious it is a bit oh very nice so what else we can say then again he wanted to do this then the mahatma told no stop keep it aside i'll go and sit sit in a proper place and the fan you sit because we don't want to see that you fall a second time therefore you can do service to the next person only when you are physically and mentally strong so a weak person I, i want to do some service to you like that what service he can do <laughs> similarly in the mind he is very weak all kinds of desires he has and he is ever insecure no no i want to serve society what society to serve you will do <laughs> you need all the service for the <laughs> in fact he says i will serve because he is looking for some name and fame or 
some punya so that he can be saved because he is very insecure or he is uh, having some problems and so he thinks that by doing this service all these problems will be solved. What kind of service it is? It is okay. It is better than uh, no service. Uh, but again, you be strong in the mind so that you can serve others. A strong-minded person can do service, not a weak-minded person. And a mind which knows to surrender to Ishvara is a strong mind. The mind which doesn't have the, the tact of tact, it is called, you know, it doesn't have the, doesn't know the secret of Sharanagati. It is a weak mind. It can never be strong. It is consumed by its own self-interest and self-concern. It can never be strong, such a mind. You see, a person who is a worldly, he has a weak mind. Please note that. A worldly mind is a weak mind. A mind in non-attachment, virakta, is a strong mind. That is the strength of the mind. Attachment breeds weakness, doesn't make you strong. Sharanagati is the opposite of attachment. You surrender uh, all uh, self-interest to Ishvara, the mind becomes uh, strong, and such a strong-minded person can help others. Anyway, so this is Sharanagati is a very powerful topic. So, Murare, address He Murare. Mura is a Rakshasa. Ari is the one who has slain this Rakshasa, Murare. So there must be some symbolism for Murare. I don't remember the symbolism of Murari. Madhusudana is well known. Madhu is attachment. Rakshasa who is in the form of worldly attachment is called Madhu, Praga. And the Rakshasa who is in the form of aversion, Dvesha, is called Kaitabha. So Madhus, Madhu Kaitabha Mardanaha. One who has destroyed the Rakshasas Madhu Kaitava is a well known symbolism. Murare must be some such thing there. So one who has slain this demon called Murara, Mura, He Murare, Mama, Mama Karavalambam Dehi. Please lift me up. Or suppose a blind man is there walking in a forest. Then he needs somebody to hold his hand and lead. That is Karavalamba. Need not be always lifting up on it. Another way, poetic, everything is metaphorical, you know. Please give a lift. Suppose you ask, Sir, I am a young man trying to come up in life. Please give a lift. Means what? So take him into your lap and put him in a lift or what? No. Please give a lift means help. Please give a helping hand. That also they say, Sir, please give a helping hand. That is Karavalamba. So a blind man walking in a far, last path in a forest, he needs Karavalamba. Who will be Margabandhu Stotram is also there. Margabandhu. Who is Bandhu protector in the path? Ishwara. Margabandhu. So that kind of a metaphor. Mama Charataha Mama. I am a wandering. Please hold my hand and lead me. Because I am wandering where samsara ghora gahane charataha. Gahana is a forest. Frightening forest. You see, a forest that you cannot enter. That kind of a forest is called gahana. So, and what is this forest? Samsara is the forest. Samsara ghora gahane. It is a, you cannot, you don't have a path to tread and you cannot create a path because it is so dense a forest and then it is frightening to the person. You are frightened by it. That is a, a forest. You see sometimes what happens, you know, there is a thing called nightmare. So the person is sleeping and then he is dreaming and in the dream he finds so many uh, obstacles in his path, I mean so many issues that are overwhelming him and that are falling upon him and he is unable to tackle them and he is getting crushed under the weight of all these problems of life. And then uh, 
with a start, there is a sweat all over his body, with a start, with a fear, with a cry he wakes up. That kind of a feeling in life, that, that kind of, that feeling is called nightmare. So we are living in a nightmarish life, it is nightmarish life. We are people are, you look at the, uh, the western societies, highly developed and technologically advanced societies, for them they live in fear, constant fear. Constant fear. When I listen to some of these accounts, I am surprised. They say every day hundred, uh, hundreds of ships are coming and uh, uh, coming to the American ports, and from every ship hundreds of containers are coming into American land. There may be a bomb in one of those containers. This is the fear. Can you imagine? <laughs> now what should we do? We should stop it. How to stop? We should stop it at the origin of uh, the ship itself. Now they are originating, they are originating in 150 places. Where should we start? We should have a customs, U.S. customs, or the security operators in 150 countries, and it requires 250 billion dollars. Now what should we do? Okay, we will do it in three countries. <laughs> Somalia. <laughs> really? But in New York Times. <laughs> they, they gave all this information. Somalia, Pakistan, Karachi. Pakistan, another place. So from these three countries, they have offices there. The countries were forced to give some place and all that. Every container will be checked. They have some X-raying mechanisms and every container will be checked before it enters under. So this way we can... Then the opposition party one asks, three countries out of 150? <laughs> Permanent fear. So you, you come to India. <laughs> Yesterday there were bomb blasts, serial bomb blasts in all trains in Bombay and 250 people killed, 1000 people were injured and maimed. Next day morning, there is no fear on anybody's face. Okay, probably there was fear on that day, there was no fear that day also. They were busy taking care of these injured people and disposing of the dead bodies. There was no fear on anybody's face. Why it happened? Yeah, terrorists. Will it happen again? It will happen. It is happening in the last 700 years and it will happen again. So what are you going to do about it? There is a knack in that society. Okay, if you consider that as a not a very wise thing to do, okay, okay, I am afraid and sit and cry. Is that wise thing to do? Who told? One who can say, we are not afraid of these terrorists because that is not the way to live a life. That is not how things are going to happen. If I have to die, it is not necessary to have a terrorist in my as my neighbor. I will die uh, uh, in a road accident, I can die. Death is what? Fear of death appears in many forms, so I am not afraid. So that is Sharanagati. That is the wise way to live. So in a way, when we are living in the midst of so many imagined fears, all fears are imagined, I tell you. There is no real a valid fear is not there. They are all imagined fears. But it looks like that. In a given situation it looks as if it is a valid fear. So there, is, there may be a valid precaution, but nursing a fear, entertaining a fear continuously, how can that be valid? So samsara ghora gahane. And then one more point if I make, then the the... the the forest, the intractable forest, that is what we are talking about, Gahana, that becomes explained. What is the origin of these fears? Why there are fears in life? Why fear? You know why? Because there is desire, there is fear. There is fear of death. You know why? Because I love, I want to live. Okay? Suppose you ask me, do you want to live? No, I don't want to live. I don't want to live, really. Then uh, will I have death? Will I have fear of death? No. Why should I want to live? Don't you want to live? No, I don't want to live. Why? Because I am life itself, I tell you. 
What is this sugar crystal wanting to become sweet? What is that? I am life itself. A being that life, why should I want to live one day? What is that uh, desire? Horrible desire, most uh, irrational desire. Once I have a desire to live, then there is the fear of death. I do not desire to live, I don't have the fear of death. I have devoured the death and I am sitting comfortably. Over. Just I give you one very simple example. Therefore, uh, uh, so uh, uh, that way every other desire, fear is like that. Therefore, I would suggest like this. You, you just look into your heart. Recognize any fear. And why this fear? Ask a question. Immediately you will be able to connect that fear to your desire. Oh, this is the secret. Suppose you are willing to surrender that desire to Ishwara. Surrender. Willing to surrender. Then this fear will disappear. Really? This fear will disappear. One of uh, my friends was there. He was uh, anxious. Why? Because uh, his son is expecting first class. That's why he is anxious. Results are coming that day. I told him, why first class, bhai? No, no, I want my son to get first. Why? What for? His life will be happy. Must be, that must be the reason. Who told you? A person who gets first class, his life will be happy. Who told you? As a student, if he gets first class, bless him. If he doesn't get first class also, bless him with the equality of mind. Don't connect it with the future life, because all these first class fellows are struggling everywhere. These third class people are living happily. <laughs> Who told you that first class person will do well? You, you have understood everything wrong, I tell you. No, no, professional course. He, he need not do professional course. He, if he, you want your son to be adrushta, he should have adrushta, not a degree. Degree is not adrushta. Adrishta is different. Luck is different. It is not same as degree. No, no, he should study because being a young man, he should study. And because he has enrolled himself as a student, he should study hard. Having studied hard, if he gets first class, I will be happy. Fair enough. In that case, you will not have the fear that he may not get first class. So we connect this first class to the entire life, and therefore we are afraid. All wrong, you know. Just I give an example how the mere fear has an origin in desire. If you examine that, day, first know that the fear has its origin in desire. Don't try to escape from the fear. Know its origin. Its origin is desire. And see whether you can say, Lakshmi Indra Simha Mamadehi Karavalambam. I am surrendering these desires. Because these desires and fears put together constitute an intractable, frightening forest in which we are living. Samsara Dhora Gahane Charato Murare Marogra Bhikara Mruga Pramaradditasya. I am persecuted. Addita means persecuted. I am persecuted by this ferocious lion. Mruga Pramara, carnivorous animal, dangerous animal. That is a ferocious animal. And what is this Ugra Ugra Bhikara? Ugra means most cruel. And Bhikara, therefore frightening and ferocious, carnivorous animal. Could be a tiger. What is this? I am persecuted by this animal. What is that uh, animal? Mara. Mara is desire. Maro Grabhikara Mruga Pravarditasya. I tell you, a person is unable to sleep. I asked him, why are you unable to sleep? I don't know. Insomnia, I am not getting sleep. Everybody is sleeping, I am not getting sleep. No, no, there must be some agitation in your mind. That's why you are unable to sleep. Yeah, it seems to be so. Okay, then what to do? What is, about what this agitation? About what the agitation you tell me? So, anyway, to put a long story short, make a long story short, the agitation is about the, the financial situation for the coming 3-4 years or the future. So, there is a fear. Because of that you are unable to sleep. 
and that fear is connected with his greed for so much wealth. He is greedy. He wants so much. He is not satisfied with what he, he already has a million. He is now hoping for ten millions, and he is afraid that he may not get it, and therefore he is afraid. And because of that fear, he is agitated, and hence cannot sleep. What a life! I told her, you drop all that desire for wealth. You mean I don't need wealth? No, you don't need wealth. Why? You have more than enough. Why you need more? Don't. If it gets Lakshmi Devi, comes Prasanna, let her. But on your side, don't seek it. Don't entertain any desire. Then what happens, you know? Just try it, I say. Try it. Don't question. Try it. How is this that in practical life like that? If you start, then nothing is possible. <laughs> try it. Give a try. For a change, give a try. Drop that desire and see what happens. He did it. And he is sleeping happily. That is how it is. So it is the set of desires that we have which become like ferocious animals and frighten us and make life horrible, persecution. So now, the Karavalamba, unless desire, you know what is a desire? Holding on to the thing of the world. That is what a desire is. So while holding on to the world, how would you do Karavalamba? <laughs> Therefore, Maru Grabhi Karamruga Pravaraditasya Artasya. These desires and fears put together make me a distressed person. Artasya. Sorrowful and distressed. Matsara nidagha nipiditasya. This is a tropical forest. <laughs> in tropical forest, you are walking in the shade of trees, but you are getting cooked by the heat, I tell you. Did you ever try a tropical forest? Very difficult. You will not be, there is no shade, is not cool, I tell you. It is not the cool of a shade. Shade which is equally hot. In, America, in India, in the summer, the fan is going up, the fan is rotating, you are sitting underneath. You feel a roast. The wind is so hot, the best thing is stop the fan and sit. You are relatively safe. Really? The, like wind chill. The opposite kind of wind it is. It dehydrates the body, the hot wind. It hits in the face and dehydrates the body, carries away all the moisture. Stop the fan, close the doors and sit in that heat. The moisture is retained. <laughs> anyway, so it is a hot, humid, tropical forest in which we are caught, thirsty and frightened by these animals. And then, then that heat, you know what is the heat? The jealousy that what I desired, I did not yet get, but somebody else got it. <laughs> that is the heat. Matsara Nidagha. Nidagha is the heat of the blazing sun. Nidagha is a Grishma Rutu. Nipiditasya. Nitaram Piditasya. So our life has become a, so much painful with all these fears and the caused by all kinds of desires. And when there is fear and when there is desire, there is jealousy. Because I come across a person who is not afraid, at least that much, in that area. He is afraid elsewhere, but not here, in this area. And uh, he seems to be lucky, and so there is pain in the heart. You see, when I compare what I have with what the other person has, then two things happen. One, I become jealous of that person. Two, I, I fail to recognize the worth of what I have. Therefore, now what I have becomes worthless. Without comparing, what I have is having some worth and it makes me happy. But when I compare, what I have appears worthless. It is not worthless. Appears worthless. And thereby, uh, I lose the advantage of what I have. And I never get what I don't have. What I have, I have. Therefore, jealousy to the other person and losing the worth of what I have. So this is the heat. Tapa, nidagha, nipi, nitasya. So these qualities are there in the mind. And so there, 
make me a sufferer, a person who suffers in the forest like samsara. And I cannot extricate myself out of it. I cannot extricate myself. Hey Lakshmi Indra Simha, please help me, to lead me and help me to extricate out of this samsara. Lakshmi Indra Simha, Anadehi, Karavalambam. So, now where, when we started, five o'clock? So already one hour forty-five minutes. We will say one verse and conclude at that point. So they say the verse, Samsara Kupa Mati Ghora Magadha Moolam Samsara Kupa Mati Ghora Magadha Moolam Samprapya Dukkha Shata Sarpa Samakulasya Samprapya Dukkha Shata Sarpa Samakulasya Dinasya Deva Krupanapada Magatasya Krupanapada Magatasya Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam Samsara Vruksha Samsara Vruksha Madhabija Madhabija Mananta Karma Shakashatam Mananta Karma Shakashatam Karanapat Pramananga Pushpam Pramananga Pushpam Aruhya Dukkha Palitam Aruhya Dukkha Palitam Matato Dayalo Matato Dayalo Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam Samsara Jala Patitasya Samsara Jala Patitasya Yagan Nivasa Sarvendriyartha Badishartha Chashopamasya Pratkhandita Prachuratāluka Mastakasya Lakshmīnara Simuha Mamadehi Karāvalambam Andhasyame Vruta-viveka Mahādhanasya Chauraif Prabho Balibhirindriya Nāmadheyaihi Mohandha Kupa Kuhare Nihipāti Tasya Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karāvalambam Samsara Sāgara Nimajjana Muhyamānam Dhenam Vilokya Vibho Karunānidhe Māṁ Prahlāda Kheda Parihāra Parāvatāra Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karāvalambam Lakshmi Nrasimha Charanabhya Madhuratena Stotram Krutam Subhakaram Bhuvishankarena Yetat Pathanti Manuja Hari Bhakti Yukta Steyanti Tatpada Saroja Makhanda Rupam So Shantarasa Stotra will be in that style only. You won't have any other style. Viveka Vairagya, that way only this Stotra will be there. You will see. Om Purna Mada Purna Mada Purna Purna Mada Chiyate Purna Sya Purna Mada Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hi